Today we're going to take a look at the Steam Gyros, and who better to show us such things than good old Thorgrim Grudgebear himself. Yes, indeed, we've got Thorgrim here, we've got Gyrocopters, and a unit of Gyro Bombers. So what's different, I mean, besides the obvious of uh, many more unit models, including the Bombers, actually have four unit models now. Uh, yeah, the Gyrocopters here, uh, they have a Steam Gun, which is armor-piercing and explosive. I mean, I think the Steam Gun was explosive before, but it was non-AP. Now these are AP. It's a pretty tight explosion. It's not massive, but still very good damage against armored targets. Potentially, we're going to try and use it against the High Elves here today. We've also got some uh, Gyro Bombers. Looks like cannons. Yes, Dragon Max Slayers and more Slayers. Of course, we've got some Dwarf Warriors, Ulrika, who else... Um, bl bl a little blasting charge is blasting my face off and my addiction, apparently. My pronunciation just taking a tumble. That's okay. Uh, not taking a tumble is Tyrion. We also got some white lions as a front line, just five of them. Plenty of archers, single sword master, a mage of life. Uh, some Sisters of Avalorn for some AP missiles. Yeah, archers even have light armor and some silver helms for a little bit of cavalry. So I'm going to come forward here with Ulrika and try to figure out, uh, yeah, where we can start doing some damage. It'll build a Melkos Mystifying Miasma there on the Lions. And uh, Earthblood, you can see the Steam Gyros firing in. And decent damage, I mean the, the Gyro Bombers were also firing in there as well. Uh, considering they have their missile resistance, you know, uh, let's see, decent missile resistance, 30%, certainly, for the White Lions is not bad. They did take a decent amount of damage, nothing too crazy, but let's see how it goes here. As the Silver Helms maneuver up and around the side, just going to take a nice kind of Dwarven defensive posture. Unfortunately, the Gyros still do get outranged by Archers, so I'm going to have to... Be a little bit careful of how I use them here. My opponent focus fires effectively with his archers. It's going to be quite rough, but let's see here. Yeah, it's uh, Ulrika continuing to pull away, kite a little bit, use that missile attack as best she can. Tyrion is actually on foot here, not uh, needing to risk being subjected to the anti-large bonus of slayers or whatnot, but let's see. Cannon's getting some good value so far. It's going to turn and shoot some of the silver helms as they kind of approach from the side there. Going to just allow the blasting charges to go off. Let's see. Now the high elves kind of pulling back slightly, fainting somewhat, not wanting to just let the blasting charges go necessarily, but uh, let's see here. Yeah, Archer's starting to open up a little bit, Sisters of Avalorn. I'm kind of swinging my gyros out a little bit wide, not really wanting them to get shot up too much in this initial phase. I'd much rather the, you know, cheap miners take the damage, although certainly the blasting charge is very cost-effective on the Swordmasters. Also throwing those charges at the White Lions here. A little bit of uh, Pit of Shades here on the Swordmasters and the White Lions as they advance as well. But uh, they're definitely taking a lot of damage on my gyros and the bombers. Uh, we're going to try and line up some bombing runs to sh just to show you guys, you know, the damage from that. So, a little bit late on the pickup on that one, though. Even though damage comes in, still pretty solid. And uh, Sisters of Avalorn also nice and tight, basically directly under it, take less damage. There's less models there because they've already lost a couple. Um, but I am having trouble maneuvering the gyro bombers into an appropriate position. They're just like sort of awkwardly kind of following along. I think because they originally designed as single entities, I don't know, they don't always all respond effectively, like this one here is still kind of doing its own thing, kind of blocks the other one from staying in formation, so I was having a little bit of a tough time actually adjusting. Oh, another thing you might notice, Lore of Life has uh, new FX. It's, uh, you know, one of the last lores that hasn't yet been updated with new FX, so. Tyrion having a duel here with Thorgrim. It's going to go a certain kind of way. Probably not particularly great for, uh, for Thorgrim, but yeah, also not going great for my Gyros as they also take significant damage here. Ulrika getting bogged down by the Silver Helms, also not necessarily great, but uh, Thorgrim's doing okay for himself for the time being. 
And if we can get these bombers going and try and finish off, like, the Sisters of Avalorn at the very least, I don't know. There's still a lot of archers left. Really need to get my shields advancing on the archers and trying to push them away. But, uh, yeah, the bombs, I don't know. The gyro bomber, ah, I, I think th I really like the change for the gyro copters. For the gyro bomber, I'm still not 100% on it. I, I don't know if it actually is going to end up being sort of a net nerf just because they don't necessarily respond very well as a unit um yeah you can see two of the models going down there actually do land on the system of Avalon, i think doing a little bit of damage but yeah the daca from the high elves the overwhelming bow power is just too much for me to try and resist so i'm gonna throw the dwellers below dwellers does have some new fx here and uh, i think it counts more as a bombardment now I don't know. It is hitting these units. It isn't doing very much damage to them. Granted, it is dwarfs. It doesn't have very long uptime, but... Yeah, it's kind of odd. It does say that it's a bombardment. But it still is like a constant 1 AP per second. 15 second duration. Yeah, it's just kind of odd. Number of 30 projectiles. Like, I don't know. I guess if you get hit by one of those vines, it actually counts as a projectile. But it's a little bit odd. I need to do some more testing to see how effective it actually is. I think it's... Overall, a net nerf to Dwellers, which, again, is probably fine, but see some nice, uh, ooh, fancy Earth Bloods there. Lots of green sparkles as the Swordmasters and the Lions try and sustain here. Tyrion definitely taking the south end of things as Ulrika also just bullies the High Elf caster here. So, character-wise, I'm feeling quite good, but the rest of the army is definitely struggling. Uh, I'm not able to really get effective... Uh, <clears throat> contact on these archers, but we'll throw a pit of shades on them just to try and equalize things somewhat. We'll mostly finish off this one unit, the other unit getting chased by slayers, shielded warriors also coming through, but uh, this, the archers with light armor will actually just attack them in melee, which, <laughs> considering there's so many of them left, will probably do a decent job of it still. Uh, Tyrion also surviving for the time being with his Heart of Avalorn proc. Having healed him substantially, not quite dead, he is getting routed and is unlikely to come back. But let's see if Ulrika can actually finish him. Or maybe it would be more worth Ulrika's time if I were to actually run her into these archers and try and fight them in melee uh, to protect the slayers as much as possible. We do have one more steam gyro back online as well, shooting in on those archers. So definitely very solid. But uh, overall assessments of balance, I would say, from this battle and from some others I've played as well. The steam gyros are so cheap that they're going to be pretty uh, good at paying for themselves, right? They're going to be pretty cost effective, I think. Uh, even in this battle, I didn't necessarily use them very well, but they still were able to get a pretty good amount of value back when more than paying for themselves, at least in this specific instance. The bomber I'm a little bit less high on. I think I need to try it a little bit more and see, but it just seems sort of clunky to try and use as a unit. I don't know. Maybe there's some under-the-hood reasons why they don't necessarily respond well as a unit, but it just doesn't feel good to use. I don't know, it's hard to describe in uh, more specific sort of neo-scientific terms, if you will. Not that this game's scientific in any way, shape, or form, but you know what I mean. Anyway, yeah, Thorgrim making his final stand there, getting hit by the long-range missiles. Uh, <laughs> Ulrika also... <laughs> uh, Tyrion comes back and just actually gets a couple of hits on her, along with the bow shots and it's gonna be a victory for the high elves yeah narrow defeat for my dwarfs but you know still trying things out obviously and the bombers were definitely a, a no-go for me <laughs> but you know in hindsight being 2020 but if i just had some like quarrelers or rangers or even just more dwarf warriors to like run at the archers that would have been much more beneficial i don't know <laughs> excuse me the or just more of the gyrocopters honestly the cheap ones seem to be very effective. So, we'll let these uh, Slayers have their final end here. Tyrion slays the one dragon back. I think we've just got a handful more over here fighting these archers. Meeting their end against the Elgi. Foul Elves, of course, being what they are. Oh, yeah. Takes a couple double attacks. I think this is the last guy. Ooh, a little jumping stab right there. And then just the light show from the Sisters of Avalorn. Like, hey guys, let's just finish this. So there you go. Quite a fun one, it must be said. Um, 
Yeah, definitely very interesting. I mean, Thorgrim does okay. Ulrika, in basically every game I've taken her so far with the dwarves, has gotten insane value. So I think she's going to be an incredibly potent piece for the dwarves and definitely makes them a lot more dynamic and interesting to play, in my opinion. Uh, Dragon Backslayers, you know, are what they always have been, going to be quite good. Yeah, the Steam Gyros, I mean, if you kind of average out their value, right, they both pay for themselves. The Copter, not quite so much. Cannon also was pretty decent, even though I put some chevrons in it, it wasn't quite cost effective. But uh, yeah, definitely interesting overall. But I do, I'm really liking where the steam gyros are at right now for sure. They're very cheap and cost effective, can help clear out armored infantry, um, both with their main gun and with the bombs. Uh, you know, the bombs are also, as you saw there, can be good at nuking like an archery unit or two if you can actually fly over them without taking too much damage. You know, drop the bombs and then fly back out. I was unable to do successfully, but, you know, if you have better micro than me, you probably could pull it off, no problem. Um, but, yeah, for the high elves here, I mean, obviously, Tyrion gets some good value, considering he's on foot. He's relatively cheap and cost-effective. Across the rest of the army, uh, the archers and the Sisters of Avalorn definitely get a lot of value shooting down the gyros and also helping to finish off Thorgrim in the late game there. But uh, definitely a fun one. Welcome to played to my opponent. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. If you do like the sort of content, you want to see more of the new stuff in early access, be sure to like and subscribe. Share this video with someone if you found it uh, any sort of type of way. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.